Good morning to you on this day that the Lord has made, a day where we celebrate God's love that never ceases, God's blessings that enrich our lives, and God's light that shines in the darkness. My name is Tom Ulrich, and on behalf of New Covenant Community Church, I want to welcome you to our online worship service as we rejoice in the ability to praise God regardless of where we are gathered. And speaking of gathering, it is with joy that I am able to share with you that our governing board met last week. And in the course of their deliberations, it was discerned that New Covenant Community Church, after more than a year of missing our church fellowship due to the pandemic, will reassemble in our sanctuary in order to resume in-person worship services on Sunday morning, May 30th at 10.30 a.m. And we certainly want to invite you to be with us on that occasion. Masks will be required, and we will also maintain social distancing in the pews. Nevertheless, we hope that if you feel comfortable, you will join us for worship. If you don't feel comfortable worshiping in person, you will be able to tune in to our service, which will be live streamed on YouTube. But during this worship service, I want to encourage you to participate with us in our liturgy and in song. As with gratitude to Ken Heishman, who will lead us, we will sing several hymns. Those of you who are on our email list hopefully receive the lyrics of these hymns as well as the liturgy for our service. And if you are not currently on our email list but would like to be, we would certainly be glad to include you if you would kindly contact our church office. By doing so, you can also forward to us any prayer requests you may have. Now, as we seek in our lives to do justice, to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. Let us begin this time together with our responsive call to worship, which is found in the bulletin that you received by email. Come, let us worship the God who loves us and cares for us. Because the Lord leads us and guides our ways, we are confident to entrust our lives to God's care. The Lord redeems us and delivers us from trouble. Let us thank God for the faithfulness that God shares with us. Although the way seems long and the road may be rough, we can trust the Lord who gives us hope and peace. As God's people, let us worship the King, all glorious above, and let us sing together. Do we trust nor 
Friends, we gather together because we know that the Lord can indeed deliver us from our guilt and shame. But even though God can liberate us from the prisons of the past, we often remain enslaved to the bondage of sin. Nevertheless, the God who is love continues to lead us to the waters of grace and forgiveness where God can cleanse us of our sin and wash us in the rivers of repentance, renewal, and reconciliation. Therefore, trusting in God's grace and mercy, let us confess our sins to God and discover the newness that God desires for us as we share in our corporate prayer of confession, which is found in the bulletin that was provided. Let us pray together. Merciful Lord of all life, although you share your love with all humanity, we confess that we have not learned to love all people as Jesus taught us. You have called us to share your love with the world, but we acknowledge that our words and actions are not always grounded in love. We squabble over things which are often insignificant and petty, and we frequently get caught up in power struggles and the desire to control. Forgive us, Lord, and fill our hearts anew with your love. Turn us away from anything which causes pain for you or our sisters and brothers, so that Christ's commandment of love may become the chief desire of our hearts. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Amen. This is a new song I'll sing through the first verse. Uh, to introduce it to you, and then you can join back in. We'll sing all five verses together. God be the love to search and keep me. God be the prayer to move my voice. God be the strength to now uphold me. Oh, Christ, surround me. Be the love to search and keep me. God be the prayer to move my voice. God be the strength to now uphold me.
Christ in the eyes of all who see me, Christ in the ears that hear my voice, Christ in the hearts of all who know me, oh Christ, surround them, oh Christ, surround me. Recognizing that God is the love who searches for us and keeps us, we turn to the letter of 1 John for our scripture reading. The author of this document is not identified by name or by title, but because of the emphasis on love, the only commandment that Jesus gives in the Gospel of John, this letter became attributed to John. This letter appears to be addressed to a minority community that has experienced some degree of rejection, not only from their society, but also in their theology. The author mentions people who went out from us, people who may have actually left their congregation, and it refers to individuals who are from the world, not from God, the people who prefer the culture to the community of faith. So faced with this kind of situation, what do you do? Well, in John, first, in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21, we get an answer. Let us hear the word of the Lord. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be this atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, or liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Friends, this is a word from the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Words, words, words. We live in a world of words, saturated with syllables, confronted with phrases, inundated with idioms. Words, words, words. In fact, words are so intricately woven into the tapestry of our lives that we do word processing. We offer a word to the wise, when we make promises, we give our word. And to avoid being misinterpreted, we don't want anyone to put words in our mouths. We employ words of praise and protest, words of grief and gratitude, words of comfort and encouragement. 
We use words in prayer and words to care, to express feeling and to promote healing, to inquire and to inspire. With our words, we advocate, educate, and elucidate. With our words, we describe, inscribe, and transcribe. And with our words, we apologize, evangelize, and emphasize. There are words that are careening with meaning, words capable of expressing a blessing, words that grace us and embrace us. And yet the author of, first, of the first letter of John chooses from the vast vocabulary of human language, from the rich reservoir of theological nomenclature, from the immense lexicon of the Christian faith, the author of the first letter of John chooses just one word to describe God. The author states, God is love. In describing God, that's what he said. That's all he said. One word. Love. He did not say God is omniscient. He did not say God is omnipotent. He said, God is love. And in describing God as love, the author was telling the people to whom he was writing that everything that God does is loving. And because God has first loved us, we ought to love one another. And perhaps that is where the first problems arose. Because apparently for some in John's community of faith, loving one another only constituted mere words, just words, mindlessly repeated words. That is why John wrote to his congregation, those who with their words say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. For John, those who said that they loved God but ignored their siblings in the world were polluting the pristine rivers of God's love with the poison of fear and faithlessness. And John wanted to emphasize that God's love was not conveyed through some saccharine sentiment which supports our interests or makes us feel better about who we are as our, in ourselves. Instead, love is what God through Jesus Christ has sacrificially given the church, and love is what the church is called to share with all humanity. Beloved, John says, since God has loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. For those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. And those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. You see, God's love is more than mere words, words, words. Because words, while they can be pretty and poetic, while they can be flowery and flattering, while they can raise our aspiration and fire our inspiration, words are easy to say. But God's love calls us to action and even holds a mirror before our congregation so that we can see where Christ is walking among us, touching us with grace, lifting us with hope, and transforming us with love. In fact, in that mirror, have you seen that kind of love recently? Because God's love has consistently invited us to the table to share the gifts of the bread and the cup, have you seen that love in the people who participate in or contribute to the hunger walk so that we can share God's love by providing groceries for the people who do not have enough to eat? Because God's love was revealed in Jesus Christ when our Lord walked on the water to still the storm that the disciples were experiencing, have you seen that love among individuals in our church? as you provided buckets of care for the people of Honduras who had experienced hurricanes in their homeland? 
Because God's love in Jesus Christ was demonstrated as he embraced all people. Have you seen that kind of love active among us to ensure that we flourish together in the fellowship of the common good rather than shriveling into a society of fear, selfishness, and tribal mean-spiritedness? Have you seen God's love among us recently? Because it's not that God's love in Christ isn't present. It's whether we are open to God's love that is already here so that we may share it with all humanity. Several years ago, Jackie Lamprey, a hospital clerk in Massachusetts, and her husband went to China to adopt their son, Luke. Not long after arriving there, the people from the orphanage dropped the boy off at their hotel room and then left without even saying goodbye. The boy was nearly six years old, only 28 pounds, and his face was crisscrossed with scars. Clearly, he was terrified. What are his favorite things? Jackie Lantry yelled down the hall. Noodles, they replied as the elevator door shut. Luke kicked and screamed. She, took, she stood between him and the door to keep him from bolting. His cries were anguished and animal-like. He had never seen a mirror and tried to escape by running through one. She wrapped her arms around him so he could not hit or kick. After an hour and a half, he finally fell asleep, exhausted. She called room service and asked for every noodle dish on the menu. Luke woke up, looked at her, and started sobbing again. She handed him chopsticks and pointed at the food. He stopped crying and started to eat, and he ate until he was, she was sure that he would be sick. That night, they went for a walk. Delighted at the moon, he pantomimed, what is it? She said, the moon, it's the moon. He reached up and tried to touch it. He cried again when she tried to give him a bath until she started to play with the water. By the end of his bath, the room was soaked. But he was giggling. She lotioned him up powdered him down, and clothed him in soft PJs. They read the book, One Yellow Lion. He loved looking at the colorful pictures and turning the pages, and by the end of the night, he was saying, One Yellow Lion. The next day, they met the orphanage officials to do the paperwork. Luke was on her lap as the authorities filed into the he looked at them, and she wrapped her arms tightly around his waist. Luke was a sad, shy boy for a long time after those first days. He cried easily and withdrew with the slightest provocation. He hid food in his pillowcase and foraged in garbage cans. Jackie wondered if he would ever get over the wounds of neglect that the orphanage had beaten into him. Yet four years later, Luke is smart, funny, a happy fourth grader. He is loaded with charm and is a natural athlete. His teachers say he is well behaved and works very hard. And one of Jackie's neighbors says that she has never seen a happier kid. Still, when Jackie Landry thinks back, she's amazed at what transformed this abused, terrified little creature. It was not therapy or counselors or medications. It did not cost money, require connections, or great privilege. It was love. Love in action. 
comprised of compassion, care, security, and a leap of faith. Love that has the power to heal. Love that has the power to transform. One day, not long ago, Jackie Landry asked Luke if anyone had ever loved him in China. And he said, yes, you did. And when we in the church look out at the world, a world that is wounded and troubled and scarred, and we ask, has anyone ever loved you? If we have been true to our faith, then the world will answer, yes, you did. Indeed, we love because God first loved us. And if we say with our words, I love God, but hate our brothers or sisters, because they hold a different political view or a different religious understanding or a different kind of lifestyle, then we are not telling the truth. Because love, God's love, requires more than words. After all, God's love empowers us to become new people, different people, transformed people, where we can live more fully in a right relationship with God and acknowledge our solidarity with our sisters and brothers everywhere. It is this love that liberates life. It is this love that creates a new community. And it is this love that heals rather than hurts, restores rather than retaliates, and redeems rather than rejects. It is this love that immerses us in mission. It is this love that defeats fear and suspicion. And it is this love that we are called to embody. We must live it. We must share it. And we must reveal it. Because if we don't, we are only mouthing words, words, words. And as people of faith, we want our actions to speak louder than words. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
tunes, my heart love, my heart love, they will know we are Christians, my heart love. Let us pray together. God of grace, who has shaped us, nurtured us, and claimed us as your own, at every place on earth, you speak to us in the language of love. And as we hear your voice, help us to find the humility and the courage, the boldness and the grace to commit ourselves to your way, so that in our loving and being loved, we may somehow ignite our world with a compassion so intense that violence and abuse, rejection and condemnation, neglect and greed become unthinkable. Remind us and all of us who would exclude, berate, or bully others that all of us are made in your image and we are all one body. Teach us to love other people as you have loved us, to embrace and welcome others as you have welcomed us, and to enjoy and respect the community where we live and work. Grant that your love would grow within us, and then through us, may your love be shared throughout the world. Eternal God, because you call us to care for our fellow human beings in times of distress, difficulty, and disease, we pray for our siblings in India who are overcome by waves of grief, uncertainty, and fear due, the, due to the coronavirus. As we were lament the lack of vaccines and sufficient medical care for that country, and as we share their sorrow, we pray that in this unnerving season, they may soon experience some sense of relief from the pandemic. Open our eyes so that we may see you in each other, and we would then be inspired to participate in your work that serves the common good of the world. Equip us to be life-giving instruments of your love so that we may speak gracefully to those whose ears cannot yet hear the message you offer to all humankind. Guard us from the indifference that hinders us from responding to your word and touch our lips and magnify our voices so that we may announce your life-giving word with all humanity. Reveal to us how we may grow to love and accept the diversity in our land and help us to treasure each other for the wondrous gifts and talents each person has. Breathe your spirit into all humanity and employ us as your faithful instruments who fashion a new world for all people. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught his disciples when praying to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, at New Covenant Community Church, we seek to serve our community and our world by doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with our God. And through your support, we are able to enhance with our gifts the individuals in our community and in our world who are experiencing poverty or hardship. Indeed, our congregation, every congregation, is called to speak out and to share what we have so that we can make a difference in creating a new reality for our fellow human beings. This opportunity has become especially vivid as we continue to confront a global pandemic in which the question many of us face is not what's for dinner, but do we get to have dinner? However, through the efforts of the Akron Canton Food Bank and the upcoming Hunger Wall, many people among our most vulnerable populations can receive the food and nutrition that they need. Kiwana and Darlene are just two of the individuals who have recently taken on the added responsibility of caring for extended family members. 
And when financial resources are slim, the food bank makes it possible for them to provide for those family members. Kiwana says, we wouldn't know how we we're going to put food on the table, but this place makes a difference. In addition, with the help offered by the food bank, John and Anna are two of the many senior citizens who rely on the food bank for assistance so that they can afford both food and medication. And even though they experience compromised immune systems, the drive through option at the food bank furnishes a safe option for them. As a result, by participating in or contributing to the hunger walk, we help to make a transformative difference in the lives of our fellow human beings in the community. Therefore, on behalf of all of us at New Covenant Community Church, let me thank you for the many ways that you share your financial resources and your human resources in the service of God in our community. May God forever bless you as you give. And now may God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct your steps in all that you do. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may God's Spirit so strengthen your hearts in boldness and holiness, that in all things and with all people, you may live in faith, hope, and love. For the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord.